Hi, this is Regina Y. Favors with a new book titled Favors Mentoring School. And so the title is uh, Keys to Help You Overcome Procrastination to Build Capacity. So it works as a wor uh, writing workshop and it is available on Amazon.com. So one of the keys, wear the dress that fits you, is one thing that I thought was very interesting. I pose a particular uh, example when you are going into, say, a dress shop or the dress area of a particular uh, place, and you're looking for something. You don't quite know what you're looking for, but it's one of those things where you say, I'll know it when I see it, right? That works a lot like vision. But you also want to think about it in terms of when you are trying on clothes. Um, you know that at, at times when you get two outfits, sometimes the shirt is too big and the pants are too tight. Or sometimes the shirt is too tight and the pants are too big, right? Uh, especially if it's uh, a favorite item uh, that you think would go very well with your wardrobe. And so when you go to the dress area, you see the same thing. Um, sometimes the top of the dress is too loose, but the bottom of the dress fits just perfectly, sometimes snugly. And then sometimes the top is too tight and, and the bottom seems to be loose enough, but not that loose, but it seems to be also still perfect for your style. And so you struggle trying to figure out, uh, the type of dress that's going to work for you. And so then you go around the store the uh, the store assistant is asking you questions as if uh, just to be helpful. And you say, well, I don't know yet. I'm just kind of looking. And then the person goes out of her way or his way to try to find what it is that you are looking for, even though you didn't tell the person what you were looking for. And then um, she or he runs, runs, uh, runs himself uh, ragged trying to find something that you haven't even told them. But it's true, only you would know what you're looking for. And so once you have worn your own self out, maybe trying on different clothes, different types of dresses, different types of outfits and looks, and then the other, uh, the store associate has done the exact same thing, then as you are leaving or then as you are making a decision to go on ahead and leave, you say, that's it. That's the dress. You see something on the rack and it just looks like what you're supposed to wear. And then you confirm it by actually going in and putting it on. And um, uh, it fits right. It fits right in all areas. The arms are not too tight. The bust area is just perfect. The waist is not too uh, tight or loose. And the bottom just works well for you for what you want to do with the dress. And so you buy it and you go on ahead and leave and you carry on um, with the rest of your day, sometimes the rest of your life. Well, your gifts and talents work exactly the same way. The job that you're supposed to be in works exactly the same way. A lot of times people think uh, because the job is not producing enough for them quickly enough that they will get off one path and get on another because they want the immediate gratification of, of their efforts, their efforts, their their work, their work contribution. They want they want the praise now. They want the pat on the back now. They want someone to come over to them and look at their paper that they have drawn a stick person on and say, "Oh, you're doing very well." But sometimes the dress that you are wearing uh, will not bring you the immediate gratification. The job that you're in. So the dress could be the job that you're in. The dress could be the gift and talent that you are uh, working out in your life. It may take you years to get to what you really are envisioning for yourself. If you think about uh, the Harry Potter series with J.K. Rowling, she learned she learned how to write a book when she was a child, and then she told her mom to go and publish the book, but she was a child. And then later in life, she had regular life issues, marriage issues, child issues she was poor for a minute um had to be on public assistance in her country but she was continually writing plotting out um uh, her stories uh and then there were multiple times when she was trying to uh submit her work for publication and it was rejected a lot of double digit times and then later she managed to find the right publisher 
who uh, accepted her work and published her work. And now she's J.K. Rowling of the Harry Potter series. And so that's just one of many examples that even though she was going after multiple publishers, the one that would be the right dress for her was the publisher who accepted her, uh, managed to get it across the pond to the U.S., and now it's uh, a, a huge series, still respectable uh, and still admired. And also the dress that she was trying to present in, uh, initially as a child to be published, that first little book that she wrote, that wasn't that wasn't the one that was just introduction, maybe introduction to the person that she was going to become. So, for example, you usually have some idea of who you're going to become in your childhood sometimes. When I was a, a young girl, I was uh, I used to line up all my dolls and bears and put pen and paper in front of them and then teach them something. I don't know what I was teaching them. And then later I graduated to the neighborhood kids, put pen and paper in front, lined them up, put pen and paper in front of them. And then I was teaching them something. Again, I don't know what I was teaching them. And later when I went through high school, graduated, went through community college, I was actually, my, my initial major was going to be computer science. And so I was going for the money. And uh, one day uh, after transferring to the university environment, I said I needed some extra money. And so I saw a tutoring uh, ad on campus, advertisement on campus. And so I just decided to go on ahead and um, you know, become a tutor. And so I was first assigned to a classroom where the uh, classroom already had an instructor. And so I sat at the back and I sort of noticed what he was doing. I like what he was doing. He was teaching the students, but he was teaching them strategies and um, uh, life lessons and ways of uh, understanding the, the immediate material. And I just thought that was so interesting. And then later I became uh, a drop-in writing tutor for one of the departments on campus. And just the way that I was explaining something, you know, not having had read that particular work that, that the student was working on in their class, but the way that I just understood how to explain it just really got to me. And then later I became a graduate writing tutor where, where I was drop-in. And something about my experiences in that particular situation, just in that immediate situation, like a light switch, whatever was off in my head turned on uh, and I just knew I was, I was supposed to become a teacher. And so I no longer pursued the computer science aspect of what I was trying to become. And I pursued all teaching. I majored in English. And then I went on to get a graduate degree and I graduate taught, and it was just a great experience. And so now I am an English professor. But I say all that to say, you have to wear the dress that fits you. Uh, there will always be temptations to do everything but the thing you, you are supposed to do. Uh, and, and sometimes you can be highly skilled at that particular thing that you are thinking about. And you, and you say to yourself, I just know I'm supposed to do it. But but when you get in it, you don't feel the joy, the passion, the heart for it. You don't contribute to it in the way that it's supposed to be. You, and In other words, you don't really respect it. In teaching, I respect teaching. I respect it to do professional development. I respect it to do research. I respect it to, uh, enough to tailor my individual uh, instruction to, to, uh, to different learners, the, the visual learner, the auditory learner, the kinesthetic learner, the learner who needs both the audio and the visual, or both the, the uh, handout and the visual. Whatever I need to do to make sure they get what they need. Sample documents, I will create them on my own. All of my individual uh, PowerPoint lessons uh, that were just, just regular you know, downloadable documents, I have now allowed enough production time to add audio, to add teaching to it. I also use screencasting software and go through the process of explaining a concept or something like that. So I do all, so I don't see that I would have been able to do that in computers uh, in terms of uh, my immediate task. I'm geared more towards education and teaching. And then of course I write. So wearing the dress that fits you is going, sometimes it is not always going to bring you uh, the immediate gratification, praise, acknowledgement, awards, 
sometimes you have to do something a very long time. And at the end of the road, you don't have to die uh, too soon. But at the end of the road, you will get whatever it is that you that you want. But you get the satisfaction of um, having respect for the gift and the talent that you are uh, in possession of. It is your territory. It is your responsibility. It is your life assignment. You get more uh, passion and excitement for developing ways to help the person understand what you already understand. So you want to wear the dress that fits you uh, because when you try to get into areas that are not truly on your path, that is a that is a form of procrastination, whether or not you think it is. And even if you do well in those other areas uh, and get some get some success, you really failed in the previous area because you set the goal as a real you set the goal, you endured the goal for a minute, and then you got off that path because maybe your feelings were hurt. You got onto another path because maybe you wanted more money and you think just because you, you, you're you getting uh, recognition on that path, on the alternate path, that that's the path you're supposed to be on. You got a lot of people who jump ship from the thing they were supposed to be doing and on some other path who are now struggling mentally, who are now struggling financially, and who are now sort of unaliving themselves that's a, that's a new term today and so i think to myself so if this was this was the thing you're supposed to do why are you now taking your life why are you now miserable why are you not now um struggling with drugs and alcohol and any other other type of advice because if it's something that you want to do and you know you're supposed to be doing you want to be alive for it you want to be sober for it you want to be able to uh talk about it, brag about it, uh, be ready for it, get up for it, uh, work on it, uh, do all different types of things. And you can't do that if you are always high, if you're always drunk, if, you, if you're always mentally uh, uh, depressed. That tells me that you're not supposed to be in that thing. And I always make this point to my students as well as to other people that when people die of tragedy, it is, like, it is um, almost 100% that they were out of order somewhere and that they were in, in a place that they were not supposed to be. Because if you, it doesn't make any sense that you have people who, who uh, last all the way to their 80s and 90s uh, with their gifts and talents, and then they go on ahead and, and leave this earth. And you have some of these people who are like 20, uh, 20, 25, 30, who are leaving this earth too early. And that, all that tells me is that you were somewhere you were not supposed to be. You were wearing the wrong dress. Not everybody is supposed to become a baller. Not everybody is supposed to become a rapper. Not everybody is supposed to become an entertainer. Not everybody, just because you see what someone else is doing and doing very well, does not necessarily mean that you, you are the one who's supposed to be doing that. And so and anything that you want to do, any dress that you want to wear, is going to take some cultivation. It's going to take some development. The person who the so the um the person who sews dresses and designs dresses, makes dresses, etc., there's a whole workshop process, warehouse processing uh to the dress that you see on the rack. There's the thread, there there's the thread consideration, there's the button consideration, there's the fabric considerations. There's the hang, how it's going to hang on the model. Uh, there's a number of, uh, there's the pattern cutting. Uh, there's a number of processes that go into making that final model. And so anything that you're going to do, any dress that, that you're going to wear, whether you want to become an entrepreneur, whether you want to become a, a small business owner, whether you want to become a singer, a writer, um, you want to become a big, a big name celebrity. You want to have a major brand, an influencer. It's going to have its own process. That type of dress is going to have its own process, and you're not going to be able to just put something on just because you think it it wears well on you. Many people are trying to take other people's coats. Many people are trying to take other people's pants. Many people are trying to take other people's purses. Everything they're trying to take everything that belongs to someone else and put it on them as if it's going to fit them. 
And even if it puts on, even if you put it on and you can close it and, and it wears well on you, doesn't mean that you understand the responsibility that comes with that dress. Uh, for my future career preparation, I want to become chair and then likely uh, associate dean or something. Uh, but I don't really see myself as president of a college. Now, could I change my mind much later in life? Sure. But for right now, I want to prepare to become chair and deal with um, many of the people who come up, up under the chair and, and work to do that. And then also one of my major uh, vision uh, practices in, uh, in terms of preparation is creating teaching videos, English teaching videos. And that's where I am right now. And so the chair position is like five years, 10 years down the road. Well, I say five years down the road, as well as the dean position, associate dean position would be 10 years down the road. So I understand that I have to prepare for where I want to go, but it's still within the, it's still within the same environment, the same dress that I'm wearing now in terms of English faculty. So when you're thinking about uh, the dress that fits you, the one that fits you in terms of your personality, your understanding about things, uh, your work ethic, do you have the work ethic to work where you are? And then do you have the work ethic to work at the higher levels? Not everybody is going to be an in administrator at the top echelon of, of administration. Sometimes you are middle management. Sometimes you are just at the coordinator and supervisory roles. And so you have to understand because uh, when you see all these people doing very well in their in their careers or anything that they're doing school, it's because they put in uh, deliberate hours of practice and preparation. And so that by the time you see them now, you look at it as, oh, they were they were an overnight success. No, that was 10, 15, 20, 25 years of working on a single thing being committed to it, uh, holding allegiance to it, being loyal to it. And now you see the fruits of their labor. So wear the dress that fits you. I can go on and on and on about this, and I really would like to, but I would rather just uh, stop right here. But this book is now available on Amazon.com. Uh, uh, possibly type in my name or type in the full title with my name. And so it'll give you some uh, insight about how to build capacity uh, in terms of overcoming procrastination. Again, wear the dress that fits you.